as libertarians, anarchists, free thinkers, what have you, one of the things we have to be careful with is rhetorical loading. Because there are certain ways of phrasing, certain um, cultural elements, certain responses to certain things that uh, when simply repeated uh, convey a side of a situation. One such example is if, for instance, in the Israel-Palestine conflict, I said that Israel has a right to defend itself. That would conjure up a very specific set of policy prescriptions. It would conjure up the idea that um, Israel was defending itself and that it has the right to continue doing so. So if I simply left it at that, then that would be nothing more than Israeli propaganda. Similarly, uh, the Haitian pets situation, where a bunch of people are claiming with zero evidence that Haitians are stealing Americans' pets. Haitian immigrants are stealing Americans' pets and eating them. Um, and posting things like AI-generated images of Trump saving the pets by uh, having more uh, like rigid immigration policy. Those kinds of things lead to the poor treatment of Haitians in a very similar way to simply saying Israel has a right to defend itself, leading to the mistreatment of the Palestinians. You know, the whole genocide thing. So, as libertarians, we have certain things that we need to make sure we're doing. Um, and in that respect, uh, in that spirit, um, I think that it's vital, not optional, but vital that when conveying a story, uh, we get as many of the sides as possible. We try to understand from their perspective what's going on and what might have gone wrong. Because if that's not the case, then we have no actual leg to stand on. Simply repeating one side of things is a good way to get the people who are also doing that on your side, but it's not a good way to get the actual story out there, to be ethical about it, to be reasonable. And when it comes down to it, the only thing that does is increase tribalization. For instance, the Johnny Depp situation, where everybody just immediately believed Amber Heard, right? We didn't actually have evidence. We had her testimony, and that was enough, right? Um, many such cases involving that, many such sort of allegations that later got proven false. Um, but simply saying believe women got you a lot of support during the Amber Heard situation. Um, and it will always get you support to rally behind the obvious sort of cultural monoliths of a cause. Now, this leads me to believe that the only way to be an effective speaker for liberty, for anarchy, for a breakdown of previous social orders in order to have the new foundation for a freer and more just society, the cornerstone foundation of this has to be truth. And if we're not willing to plunge at the truth because our in-groups are telling us something different, and because it's convenient to bully the out-group, we are no better than the state because we are functionally doing the exact same cultural things and creating the foundation for that culture to thrive. We shouldn't be doing that. What we should be doing is trying to understand as much as possible about the situation before even commenting on it. 
So in that spirit, my advice to anybody trying to understand, you know, the foundations for a freer world is read both sides, talk to both sides, try to get the story from as many different people as possible. This has led me to many a conversation with communists that I previously wouldn't have entertained. Because, believe it or not, to those new to this channel, I was once a rabid anti-communist. I was once a kill-the-immigrants kind of person. Um, I regret that part of my life. In that same part of my life, I was a glass-the-middle-east sort of person. I believed that uh, Western civilization must be preserved and that everything was an attack on Christianity. This was when I was in high school, which was fucking over 15 years ago. About that? Something similar. It's like half of my life ago, yo, that I was in high school repeating this bullshit. And I was repeating all that bullshit because I had people in my life who responded positively to that. I was trying to ingratiate myself to my father. I was trying to ingratiate myself to my church. I was trying to ingratiate myself to local conservative structures in the town. And it was working, to be honest. Somewhat. I was trying to find a place to fit in. But anytime I would ask those people a question, I would be treated worse. And when I was given the opportunity to speak on a subject, I had to speak in very specific and curated ways. I had to repeat the kinds of things that would reify their narrative or they wouldn't add me to the script. So one of the things that I've become pretty good at is stubbornly refusing to do that trying to get as much information about a situation as possible, talk to those people, you know, get information from that guy or that person, and trying to actually drive at the heart of matters rather than simply hacking at branches. This has made me unpopular in a wide variety of circles, and some of those circles uh, have employed tactics very similar to it, wedging their entire fucking rhetorical basket against me and treating me as the outgroup it was okay to isolate and scapegoat and honestly bully and it's been this way for a decade and a half because i've gradually been more and more receptive to more and more viewpoints and i think that's kind of what you have to do you have to be able to understand people where they are Instead of, for instance, being an authoritarian leftist and saying people should be thrown against the wall, or being an authoritarian right-winger and saying they should be thrown out of helicopters, maybe we should stop throwing people. I mean, you know, unless it's redacted. But either way, the general vibe that I want to give off is there are more than one side to... A variety of stories and typically there's some truth in both camps and by typically I mean like with a greater frequency than 50% I'm not saying that this is something that is you know 99% there are some cases where just one side is right but like okay Israel did have a right to defend itself let's hypothetically say and Let's hypothetically say that they're not colonizers and that they have a right to that land to begin with. And let's be real fair to that side. Let's steel man it. 40,000 is not enough justification for defense of a thing that killed 3,000. It's not. You can't say 40,000 equals 3,000. You can't do it. It doesn't work. And, you know, let's say that 
there are some Haitians finding, like, animals in the park to consume or some shit like that. Um, are you a vegan? I'm not. What? <laughs> so they're using it in sacrifice. So do most other, other religions, like, in terms of justification. So maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But you know what these people have mostly? They have, like, one picture of a Haitian, like, a black person, not even verifiably a Haitian, carrying a goose down the street. And then it turns out that guy's a citizen. And I think, like, just natural born. And <laughs> uh, it's so exhausting. It's exhausting. And then it's exhausting even more when a lot of the people involved in this kind of thing are just AI generating their slop. Like, when people claim that Kamala Harris is AI generating her crowd size, but then they ignore that Trump literally AI generated black people and a variety of other things in order to campaign for his own ass. You know, or they'll they'll say that, you know, Trump uh like put all these kids in cages and they'll use that rhetorical loading device and they'll ignore the fact that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have put more kids in cages and are continuing his wall and are a variety of other ways on the same page about similar shit. There's more to this story. Just leaving it there and having this nice, neat, packaged, little, nuance-free morsel is a good way to throw it to your dogs, your attack dogs. But it's not a good way to have human communication across boundaries and actually break those boundaries down. And I've experienced that so many times in my own life, I've experienced that where it was okay to antagonize me. It was okay because I was in the out group. So my story didn't matter. I experienced that when I was a kid in school. It was one of the reasons that I joined the conservative side because I thought if I joined that conservative side, I would have a community. I would have people at my six. I would have the ability to question the narrative. I used to carry a copy of Glenn Beck's Arguing with Idiots special edition book with him in that Fuhrer cap on the front, the czar look that he used to go for, like talking about the czars in charge of various, like I think Obama positions. Point is, I used to be a conservative really married to the narrative because I had the notion that this would give me the sense of community that I lacked, that it would give me an in-group because a whole lot of other people were part of the out-group, making me the out-group, and I thought, well, fuck these people. I'll join anything so that I don't feel so alone. Um, and I could continue listing examples, but this is psychologically true. I'm sure that at least one person out there feels what I'm saying on a visceral fucking level. That a lot of the time, the reason people join terrible shit is because they felt alone. And a lot of the, the reason that they're so okay with stringing along these one-sided narratives, these handily packaged little nuance-free things, is because maybe they'll get a piece of that social acceptance pie that they can use as social leverage. And the reason I'm bringing all this up is because, yet again, I'm in a situation like this. And I'm not going to talk too much about this or make it too much about me. But what I will say is, not seeking both sides of a situation and simply repeating certain elements of it that were spoon-fed to you by one side ain't going to work for me. Because I know what this is. I've been there before. I have been there. I have done that. I'm not wearing a t-shirt. Honestly, I just slapped on the same fucking shirt that I was wearing last night. But, like, you know, to be completely real here, this is the culture we have to crush if we are going to actually get anarchy. This, like, 
bullshit outgrouping, this treating people like shit because other people in your social circles treated them like shit and not because it makes sense to you, not because you can make it make sense to other people, just continuing the spread. That's the reason that there are still some people out there claiming that there is not a genocide happening to the Palestinians because Palestinians are part of the anti-Western outgroup. And so it's okay to paint them with the worst brush possible in an attempt to control the narrative. I disagree with that. I don't think that's okay. I don't think it's okay to talk about roving Haitian cannibal gangs, especially since that story turned out to be AI-generated. And, in fact, Haiti had not been taken over by roving Haitian cannibal gangs. That, frankly, wasn't happening. Um, and Haitians aren't eating your pets. And Israel is doing a genocide. And just taking a moment to contextualize and look at the other side will tell you that. It'll tell you that the Republicans and the Democrats are both two sides of a very bad coin. And I'm not even both sides in it. Because, like, I, I've definitely talked more against one uh, of those sides recently. You know? I'm not going to say that I'm completely unbiased. I'm not going to say that I'm fucking some perfect information god, because I'm not. I'm a fucking guy. I'm a sweaty, kind of smelly right now guy uh, in, in a fucking a fucking black striped fucking, like, button-up shirt, sweating in, in the middle of the summer heat, um, making a fucking YouTube video in his bedroom office that he has lived in in a house share for entirely too long, and there's junk on the floor, and I need to fix my shit. And I'm not perfect, and I won't claim to be perfect, which sets me apart from a lot of these other content creators who've got this, like, carefully curated nonsense image. This, this idea that you have to be, like, on the right side every time is so fucking toxic. And it only encourages people to look at exactly zero of this situation that doesn't reify their garbage. And that's how you get these garbage in, garbage out, social justice, social anti-justice circle jerks. This woke, anti-woke feud. This, you know, constant global struggle between races of a variety of different sorts. This immigrant versus natural citizen thing, this black, white, gay, straight, cis, het um, versus trans, you know, non-binary. You get all of these things because there's so much discourse that just involves sending a single message and then that message is supposed to be the be-all and end-all. And, and if you start poking holes in these echo chambers, if you start questioning them at all, you might be the outgroup, and you've seen what they do to the outgroup, and you know what they do to the outgroup, so you don't want to be the outgroup. And there's no forgiveness. Chase Oliver tweeted something 11 years ago, and Michael Malice is going to fucking repost that as though it's his current opinions. Holy shit was I worse over a decade ago. I'm glad people aren't holding me to shit that I said when I was fresh out of high school. And Chase isn't that much older than me. Man, is it fucking dishonest. So, like, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying we need more nuance. We need discussions. We need people talking to each other rather than behind blocks and padlocks and secret communities on Discord and Telegram and finding out all their stupid little niches so that they can fucking, like, support their dogma and only include people who are willing to support their dogma and then have these tiny little snippets released into the wild to attack people needlessly and often unfairly. It's not okay. And I mean to stand as a bulwark against that sort of ideological infection. That's why I've been having so many people on this channel. 
That's why I have massive panels, even though they sometimes get disorganized. Because I want people talking to each other. I want people moving against the boundaries, the artificial bullshit that keeps us fighting. That keeps us hitting each other rather than them. They're looking down from their ivory towers and laughing at these manufactured divisions. Watching us like ants pitted against each other for the latest fucking freak of the week. The scapegoat that they can point people at. And I've been that scapegoat on a variety of occasions, so I know what it's like. But I have not experienced nearly the worst of it. I am so fortunate to not have experienced nearly the worst of it. There have been people who have been targeted by this machination that have been treated so much worse. And I feel bad for them. Because a lot of those people are no longer with us. From suicide or some other fucking shit. Like mental breakdowns. Treated like shit and thrown out like garbage. They are human fucking beings. And you should treat them like it. Like for instance... Bullying somebody because they had overly reactive emotions to a fucking movie trailer. The Star Wars guy getting mocked by most of the internet because he had the audacity to cry on camera about something he was emotionally attached to. And a bunch of utter shitbags wanted to treat him poorly because they don't like to be the outgroup. So they will treat other people as the outgroup in order to cultivate their in-group. It is sick. It is parasitic. It is the culture of vultures circling for the next corpse to pick. It is evil. And I mean to stand against that. So, if that sounds good to y'all, if it sounds good to y'all to stand against that machine, get some nuance back in this motherfucker, Get us on the same page and moving forward in the right direction, the direction of truth and freedom and reason, then like, share, and subscribe, because we got a whole bunch more work to do to smash the fucking state.